Don't follow me, follow your dreams. Third time is a charm. This is take three. King Leon X, the human liberator, with another episode of Take Charge of Your Life. Today's April 5th, 2017. I'm in New Mexico on my way to Texas. All right. And since I'm driving, we're taking a pause outside of Jim Rohn's Seven Strategies for Wealth and Happiness. And we're diving right into, uh, right back into the foundation of uh, Take Charge of Your Life. Since this is episode 90, then we want to reestablish what riches are and the 12 types of enduring riches, right? If we in it for the long haul, if we in it for uh, uh, success and personal achievement, becoming our greatest version, if we in it for enlightenment and self-mastery, if we in it for personal uh, and communal accountability, then we must reestablish and redefine what wealth is, what abundance is, and the types of riches, right? Because immediately when someone says riches, they think money. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today in this episode. Right, episode 90 of our midday self mastery motivation series called Take Charge of Your Life. Where every day we choose to correct our errors in judgment. Okay, and practice a few simple disciplines that's going to lead to success. We know that um, it's, it's, we're the ones that's in charge of our smiles, in, in, uh, in, in charge of whether we're going to be celebrating our accomplishments or explaining why we're not doing well. And so it's up to us to choose every single day and not guesswork, but plan ahead and prepare ourselves for our promise, right? And our promise is our, our uh, the 12 types of enduring riches. This is what I learned. This is why I want to share this with you. Napoleon Hill wrote a book, Think and Grow Rich. This is in the intro, right? He says that when you're born, is it, there's two envelopes when you're born, right? There's two envelopes when you're born. You get to choose. This is where I got the whole concept of make the choice from years ago. You get to choose, right? The envelope, there's two envelopes. One is labeled riches, and this is the 12th type of enduring riches, which we're going to talk about today. And the other envelope is labeled penalties, or prices one pays for neglecting to choose riches. And the only way to the 12 types of enduring riches is through definite major purpose and definite chief aim, which is why we spent a few weeks speaking about goals specifically, how to set goals long-term, short-term, one year, or, or one day, one week, one month, one year, five year, or three year, five year, 10 year, 20 year transgenerational goals. We talked about that. Shared the specific strategies that you can implement for that. And the reason we spent so long talking about that, and then we probably spent another week prior talking about purpose and a definite major purpose and what success looks like for you on your terms and all of these things to get clear because it's really ultimately only one choice. You choose to take possession of your mind, direct it to the ends that you choose, or, or, or the ends of your desires, or not. That's really the choice. Napoleon Hill breaks it down as you're born in the two envelopes. And the only way to the 12 types of enduring riches is through definite major purpose. The only way through the 12 types of uh, uh, in, uh, to experience is uh, the, uh, clarity in, in specific chief aim. This is what I learned, right? This is why uh, I said positively influence the minds of the youth, create an achievement-driven culture, lead the next generation into a global renaissance, right? That was my chief aim in life that I decided in 2012 when I learned that the only way to the 12 types of enduring riches is to have a definite chief aim in life uh, that can be described in one sentence. And if you neglect to do that, if you neglect to take possession of your mind, to take possession of your life and direct it to your own desires, then you automatically get the penalties. Automatically, it's automatic. You don't have to pick up the penalties envelope. You don't, okay? You have to choose the riches envelope in order to experience them. But the, the, the penalties envelope, it's automatic. By choosing to neglect 
to take your your charge of your birthright, which is to determine your own destiny. And the penalties of not having definite major purpose and not taking possession of your mind, um, uh, according to Napoleon Hill, he says, because he broke it down into envelopes, 12 types of enduring riches, and the penalties, that, and the prices that one must pay if they neglect. Right? The penalties include uh, uh, ill health, pessimism, poverty, frustration, worry, discouragement, fear, envy, superstition, doubt, excusitis, blame, right? These are, these, these are the penalties, the prices that one must pay. I said ill health, right? These are the prices that one must pay. Whereas the benefits, when we go back to the envelopes, the envelope that's labeled riches, you open it up, there's 12 types of enduring riches. This is what we're going to speak about today in episode 90 of Take Charge of Your Life. Even though we spoke about it in the first week of Take Charge of Your Life as well. But you might not have been tuning in. So, the, the, what heads the list of the 12 types of enduring riches is a positive mental attitude that has the list that has the list because without a positive mental attitude you can't even put yourself in a position uh, to be grateful for what you what you have so each goal that you achieve each situation is never going to satisfy you it's never going to be enough because uh Unless you choose optimism and choose to program yourself to be a glasses half full type of person, then you're automatically the way that our the way that we're taught for our brains to function and operate in the way of, uh, to keep us most comfortable. It points out areas that uh, we dislike, but what we focus on expands. So, without a positive mental attitude, literally you could achieve every single goal that you have. Millionaires and billionaires kill themselves every single day. That should be enough, right? To show you that money isn't gonna change everything, right? People, it's 12 types of enduring riches. Money is just one of them, and this is where it is in the list. The first one is positive mental attitude. If you can't even embrace and love and enjoy all the beauty around you, then the universe doesn't even know how uh, how to give you more of it. more. Because if you don't really focus on what you what you love and happy about that, then there's no space to expand in that that area. That's the number one thing: positive mental attitude. Period. Having and maintaining a positive mental attitude. It's one thing to wake up with a positive mental attitude, but as soon as you hit the highway on the way to work, someone cuts you off, and it's like, motherfucker, la, 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 la. Right? So it's like having and maintaining a positive mental attitude. Whereas, that might be your response, but is that how does that affect your day, the rest of the day? Maintaining a positive attitude is uh, preparing ourselves psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually for conflict and for uh, disharmony. Fully knowing that throughout this conflict or disharmony that we're aware of, we have to be breathing to be aware of it. And so the fact that we're breathing shows us that it's, it's not a catastrophe. It might be a blip. Yeah, I see, I see them lights. Go ahead, type, make the choice. All right? That's, that's the first type of enduring riches, positive mental attitude. The second is sound health. The second is sound health. Think of, let's think about, notice how those two had the list. Positive mental attitude and sound health. They say that success is nothing but bouncing from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Sound health, without, without your health, you can't even bounce from failure to failure. 
without your health, you gotta, uh, uh, you gotta have all the uh, material things and, and uh, want and all the money in the world and all that type of stuff. Uh, all the access you got your own private jet, but if you ain't got the health to get up on the plane or take the road trips or hike the mountains or or to to uh, uh, to jump off the cliff or to bungee jump or to do all the the, the uh, uh, experiences, if you don't have that health. You see why that's the second on the list. We're talking about 12 types of enduring riches. The first type is positive mental attitude, which lasts forever. And also sound health. The third is peace of mind. Mm. We're talking about 12 types of enduring riches. And the 12th type, or the third type of enduring riches is peace of mind. It goes from positive mental attitude to sound health to peace of mind. Notice how these three things are internal, right? Because our inner world creates our outer world. And so uh, our physical reality is a byproduct of our mental plus our emotional plus our spir spiritual. And it's our job to get our mental, emotional, and spiritual completely intact and in harmony so then our physical can radiate and, and manifest that. If our physical is all over the place, that means that somewhere inside, uh, we're all over the place. And so it's our job to... to we to to construct daily rituals to, to correct our errors right peace of mind only comes from knowing that you're in charge of your destiny and the only way to know that you're in charge of your destiny is to have definite major purpose if you the the, the if you do not genuinely believe from the depths of your soul that the goals that you set out for yourself and your intentions will manifest in physical reality. And not only will they manifest in physical reality, but they already exist now in the spiritual and non non uh, uh, visible scene. Right? If, if, if you don't know, trust, and believe in your plan or your purpose, then it's impossible to have peace of mind. This is why the envelope labeled riches is the choice that must be made. Take possession of our mind directed to the ends that choose or not. If we have taken possession of our mind and we are consciously, actively directing it to the ends that we choose, to our desires and what fulfillment and success looks like for us, the process to the goal and the goal is the same. There's a certain number of experiences that one must have uh, to to build themselves up to become the type of person uh, to handle to have the mental emotional spiritual and physical capacity to handle these things that we say we want I know for a fact they drop a billion dollars on me right now even though I know for a fact that I will be a billionaire and most likely the most powerful, wealthiest, influential black man of the 21st century because of the, my results. I know for a fact that if they threw a billion on me right now, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I'll probably lose it all. Because I didn't become a billionaire. It was a billion given to me, you see. And if someone gives you a billion dollars or a million dollars, it's best you become a millionaire or develop that millionaire or billionaire mind or you will lose it all. So me, I embrace every step of the process, every step in the valley. Because I've been to the mountaintop, and I could, anytime I want to go to the mountaintop, all I got to do is close my eyes and envision my future or read the goals that I had set for myself and what that looked like. And so, I, so, but I, I know that the mountaintop and the valley is still the same land. It's still all the same. It's still all one. And I won't even appreciate the view of the mountaintop unless I started from the valley and had to hike 
up that mountain. You see? And so, no matter how low the valley is, it's your positive mental attitude and uh, and your belief in your in your 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 definite major purpose that's what's going to uh, keep your peace of mind. That's the third type of enduring riches. I, the fourth type of uh, enduring riches is freedom from fear and worry. Freedom from fear and worry. Notice how one of the penalties for neglecting to take possession of our mind directed to the things that we choose was fear and worry. One of the riches, 12 types of enduring riches, is freedom from fear. How does one become free from fear and worry? Understanding and declaring that fear is just false evidence appearing real. Fear is only a feeling. It can't hold me back. Fear is only imagination. Fear is only your thoughts. Fear is only your brain playing tricks on you. So you can accept it as true or you can deny it as false. Each time that you give the things that you're afraid of power, they be, they be, they give more. They have more power. Over. Just like well, like if you had two dogs, the one you feed more is going to be stronger. It doesn't take a science experiment to, to know that hey, if you have a dog right here, you only feed him uh, one every other day, and then you got another dog right here, you give him two meals a day. Which one's going to be stronger? Right? So if we're feeding our self-limited beliefs more than we're feeding our greatest version, which one's going to be stronger? So we become free from fear when we know, uh, when we have the, the, uh, our plan, right? And um, which goes right into, because we know fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is just an opportunity to either, it's a test. With that uncomfortable feeling, is it going to paralyze you? or uh, uh, empower you to act with courage? Is, is that feeling of fear, is it gonna empower, uh, paralyze you? Or is it going to inspire you to act with courage? Because uh, in my study of successful people, the most powerful, wealthiest, influential people of the world, they still feel fear too. Most people who's unsuccessful, they, wait till the, they try and wait for the fear to go away before they act on their goals, or they act on their purpose or their dream. They're waiting for the fear to go away. But I'm here to tell you that successful people feel fear too. They just use it differently. It just doesn't paralyze them. It, it's their fuel. It fuels them to act and to be a conqueror. And they get often excited off overcoming uh, little personal uh, fears and things that may, maybe the outside world might not might not recognize. Right. So we went positive mental attitude, sound health, peace of mind, freedom from fear and worry. Now we're talking about capacity for applied faith. We know faith, right? They say in the Bible, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, right? And there's also an acronym for faith, meaning finding answers in the heart, the heart meaning internal, right? Heart meaning finding answers with your own self, talking your own spiritual self, right? faith, but applied faith and the capacity for applied faith, that's one of the types of enduring riches. Applied faith is that childlike faith where the ability, you think the ability that you can do anything and you're not blocked by your adulthood uh, 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 pes pessimism based on your limited experiences. Our limited experiences make us think a certain way and it lowers the possibilities that we think of uh, for our future. So we only think certain things are possible for us. Whereas a child which we're children of the most high, right? That's how the Bible describes us. As a child, we're supposed to have the faith and belief, or children have the faith and belief that they can do anything, have anything. They even real life think that they can fly for real. And guess what? They done made things that you could put on your body and jump off a mountain and fly. So, I mean... Applied faith is that faith that's backed or uh, a faith in a definite major purpose that's backed by a spirit of uh, a, a willingness to persist and push no matter what and never give up. So 
we got sound health, peace of mind, positive mental attitude, freedom from fear, capacity for applied faith, and then hope for future achievement. These are enduring riches, remind you, family. These things, once you get them, you never lose them. Hope for future achievement. Right? Not just passive hope, oh, I hope things is going to get better, but for future achievement. Not just hope, but hope for future achievement. Future achievement calls for action. Right? You can't achieve anything by doing nothing. And you can't achieve anything without planning it first. Because it's not really achievement. It's just something that you did. It's not uh, achievement. Uh, achievement is, goes from goal to discipline to achievement. So the hope for future achievement is not just the passive hope that, that black people have that we just everything's just gonna magically get better or some savior's gonna come for us. But it's the hope for not only did I achieve this, and not only can I do this, this, and this, not only did I accomplish that, but I, I hope to even do more than what I have done. Positive mental attitude. Sound health, peace of mind, freedom from fear. Capacity for applied faith. Hope for future achievement. We're at number six. That's six of them. The next six. Being, number one, being engaged in the labor of love. That's a direct result of having definite major purpose. Most people are engaged in, in labor or work activities that they don't even like that they can literally care less about. But people who are guided by their definite major purpose are engaged in activities that they could do seven days a week that don't feel like work. That's one of the byproducts. Not only being a labor of love as number seven, but number eight is uh, willingness to share one's blessings with others. Like whatever you have, 12 type part of enduring riches, and you looking on the bright side of things, you have oh, you got your health, you got your uh, mental attitude, you got goals, you got applied faith, you know what I mean? You got peace of mind. You're willing to share that with people. You're willing to share those blessings. Those blessings might not be monetary. Those blessings might be in the value of words and ideas and concepts. Those blessings might be in uh, service with your hands. You know, blessings might be with your skills. Right? But it's willing to share those. If you have talents, if you have talents and skills that most people don't have, sharing those, delivering them to the board. If you can sing, sing. If you can write, write. If you can draw, draw. Right? Be willing to share that. Number nine would be wisdom to understand people. We know how important that is. Even if it's just developing the tolerance to know that regardless of how that person's action makes you feel, that's only your ego being threatened. Because nothing that any human can do, even the most horrific things that have happened, none of this stopped Earth from spinning. None of this stopped generations from being birthed. None of this stopped the sun from coming up. None of this stopped winter from coming out to fall. So it just be, must be my own personality that feels threatened by whatever experience this is from this person. But, we, but when we focus on our, ourselves and our own spiritual journey, that, that teaches us about everyone else. It allows us, when we realize that breath precedes everything, and in order to even communicate with someone, they're breathing too. Then ultimately, they got the power just like you. And how they're choosing to use or ex exude their power or the direction, whether they're using their power for the, the envelope of penalties or they're using their power for the envelope label riches. Is it, is it our job because we care to let them know, hey, you know the wrong envelope? Or should we just let them be? 
I guess that's we just put that that the answer to that question um, in the box labeled mysteries of life. <laughs> but uh, the next one. So we got positive mental attitude, sound health, peace of mind, freedom from fear and worry, uh, capacity for applied faith, hope for future achievement, labor of love, willingness to share one's blessings with others, wisdom to understand people, that was number nine. Number ten is open mind towards all subjects and all people. That's what's going to really heighten your wisdom to understand people. Is that your beliefs don't necessarily... And we all grow with this. We all still learn and we all still evolve. But what someone else believes, what I'm learning every single day, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, same gender relationships uh, and all of these other little different types of things. Um different practices, how people be moving and maneuvering. I used to say, people shouldn't do this. Or people shouldn't do that. Liars shouldn't lie. But we call them liars because that's what they do. So me? Liars are going to lie. Laughers are going to laugh and mock. You know what I mean? I just learned to put people in categories and not try and figure it all out. The open mind towards all subjects and all people before I had a definite major purpose before I was clear on, on, you know, the direction that I wanted my life to head, I was threatened by other people's beliefs and how they act and how they move. But as I gained uh, a better personal relationship with my greatest version, with my higher self, I realized that it's all okay. When I start thinking God thoughts, then it's all okay. Shit, it's all okay. Fuck it. Right? Earth's still spinning. It's really non-emotional. The universe don't have no emotions to it. It's the land is going to be there. If you drop some seeds and, and go make a garden, there will be a garden. If you don't, it won't. The universe don't care. If you let it do it by itself, it's going to be some weeds. If you do it deliberately, it might be one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. That's how it is, too. And so the last two types of enduring riches, so we went positive mental attitude, sound health, peace of mind, freedom from fear and worry, hope for future achievement, capacity for applied faith, labor of love, willingness to share one's blessings with others, open mind towards all subjects and all people, wisdom to understand people. The tenth is complete self-discipline. I mean, the, the uh, my bad, the eleventh. Is complete self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to do what you know needs to be done, whether you feel like it or not. Self-discipline is uh, uh, not only being in charge of um, we know self-discipline. I, I, that's a lot. I went a whole week on talking about self-discipline. Bottom line, self-discipline is the ability to do what you know that needs to be done, whether you feel like it or not. That's the 10th or the 11th type of enduring riches. And then the last, which is the most common and most well-known, is material riches of our own choice and quantity, i.e. money. Money is the way the world's set up now. In order to gain these material riches, uh, you need to buy them. But notice how money ended the list. Notice how money ended the list of the 12 types of enduring riches. Notice the other types of enduring riches that might be prevalent in your life in abundance that you might not even be expressing your gratitude for on a daily basis. If you so do we wanna so so when it comes to maintaining a positive mental attitude and all these other little different things. When we really understand riches and we really understand wealth and the holistic process of it, then money won't be the determining factor of our mental attitude. 
for most people, they got money, more money in their pocket, they feel better. They don't have any money in their pocket, they feel bad. That's why, uh, that's how they have it set up. That's what most people do. If we do what most people do, we have what most people have. But successful people understand the principle of willingness. They're willing to do what others are not willing to do now to have what others won't have. And it's hard work getting clear about your life's purpose. It's hard work. But I'm here to tell you that the, it's even harder trying to be 50 and still not in charge of your life. That's even harder. And that's even riskier, actually. But this is King Leon next. I see all them make the choices coming in. That was y'all 30 minutes on the dot. 30 minutes, 31 minutes just now. Hopefully I said something that resonated with you, even though I, I know I did. I seen the likes, the comments. Share the video. And uh, I'll talk to y'all soon.